other people's resources. But um, ladies and gentlemen, again, when you see this one, this is a trinomial. Again, it's in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. All right. But now we can see something that's a little bit different than the last example. You can see that my a is now 2, where before there wasn't, there wasn't a, a number there, right? It was technically 1. So we're still going to follow the same, same fact, same techniques here. We still need to create two different trinomials. However, now my first two terms have to give me 2x, or I have to give me 2x squared. Now, this one would be fairly simple. We know one's going to be 2x and the other one's going to be x. But sometimes it might be like um, 16x squared. Well, then there's a lot of different options, right? It could be 16x squared, x and 1, and x and the other. It could be 8x and 2x. It could be 4x and 4x. So there's a lot of different options. So the slow way to kind of take this through is, again, to identify um, what some of these numbers could be. So the way to do that is rather than using c up top, and b on the bottom, we have to now take into account that 2. So we're going to look for what two numbers multiply to give us a times c, but add to give us b. So a times c is 2 times 15, which is 30. And then we have 11 as b. So hopefully right now, some of you are thinking in your head, saying, what two numbers multiply to give me 30, add to give me 11? OK, I got it. Done. Some of you might be like, crap, I forget. And that's where it kind of comes into. You've got to be able to get this stuff done in your head quickly. Think about all the numbers that multiply. Now remember, the other thing I want you to think in your head, some of you might be saying, OK, I got all the numbers. I had to give you positive 11. OK, what if I gave you negative 11? OK, you should know that you know, those two, um, these both have to be negative, right? So you just got to be thinking of that state case. Um, in this case, uh, obviously, it's going to be 6 and a 5. Now, the mistake that students make is they do this. They say, oh, 6 and 5, that's going to be the two quadratics. Remember what I said at the beginning. This is incorrect because, remember, these first two terms have to multiply to give us 2x squared. x times x gives us x squared. Yeah, and 6 times 5 gives us 30. Right? This multiplied out does not give us this. Do you guys see that? So when you just quickly plug it into the binomials, that only works when a is equal to 1. All right? Just a very common mistake. So then what do we do? Well, there's a little bit of a process. All right? Um, basically, what we're going to do is we are going to replace. Teachers, please excuse this interruption. Please release the freshman and sophomore from the pet rally. Students, please leave you guys your go that way. in the classroom. Please release the freshman and sophomore for the pep rally. Leave all backpacks in the classroom. All right, see you guys later. So, nope, a wrong way. So anyways, so anyways, what we'll have here is now, basically what I've done is I've rewritten 6x and 5x. And those two add to give us 11x. Do you guys agree that all I have done is I just replaced 6x and 5x with 11x, right? Now, you might be thinking, well, Mr. McLogan, why couldn't you use 10x and 1x, right? That adds to 11x. Exactly. That's the only values that multiply to give you 30. And that's special for a reason, because that's going to help us factor it, which I don't have my red, so I'll use Oh, there's a red. So to get to our factors, what we're going to do is we're going to use factor by grouping. So what you're simply going to do is you're going to group the first two terms and then group the last two terms. Okay? Then we're going to go back to what we did in my second video, where we're going to factor out the GCF, the common factor. So we look at 2x squared and 6x, and we say, what does 2x squared and 6x have in common? They have a 2x. So when I factor out a 2x, I am now left with an x plus 3. Then I look up here, 5x and 15. What does a 5x and a 15 have in common? A 5. five. So I factor out a positive 5. And again, I'm left with an x plus 3. And that is equal to 0. So now we have to factor out again. Because remember, we're trying to get this to be binomial times binomial. So what you can see. 
that these terms are separated by this addition problem. Right? Here's a product. Here's a product. The two products are separated by this addition. So what we look at is just like we did here. See how these two terms were separated by addition? Right? These two terms are separated by addition. So we're going to go ahead and factor out the GCF again. What do these two terms have in common? An x plus 3. So I factor out an x plus 3, and I'm left with 2x plus 5. 2x plus five. Now, hopefully, you were able to maybe come up to that conclusion in your head. Maybe not. All right. You can get some practice on this, ladies and gentlemen. But as I mentioned, once we start getting practice, you know, it takes a while to start doing, especially these types of problems in your head. Um, but once we keep on going through this, you know, it will come around. So now we apply zero product property. So we have x plus 3 equals 0, 2x plus 5 equals 0, x equals negative 3, x equals negative 5 halves. Solution set, negative 3, negative 5 halves.